It was a bit late starting, wasn't I? Even by my standards. Um, but I was tweaking, okay? I was tweaking. It's, it's, I was just making it better than it was on Facebook yesterday. <laughs> I was late for you! Right, I'm just, uh, I'll just put my bee costume on, of which I'm very proud. And then we'll get going. If you just saw this lesson advertised, then it would be good for the activity if you could bring uh, what it says on the screen there. A spice jar, which you filled with rice, which you are not intending to then eat again. And a pencil. Um, yeah, I'm going to get some more than that. Because in yesterday's version of this, I threw my rice all over the floor. Um, I suppose I could pick it up, couldn't I? So much, so much rice. Oh, I'm just going to put some more in. Oh no, this is, so much, this is such a bad, it's so hard to get rice into a spice jar. I'm so sorry. I wrote this before, I wrote the to-do list, what you had to bring before I actually brought it myself. And I should have used some sort of funnel. Anyway, it's too late now. Ridiculous. Right, I'm just going to grab a pencil. Here it is, I might as well use the same one since it's already been damaged. Uh, right, I think we can get started, you know. Just have a quick read through of my notes while you lot are gathering. Yep. Yep. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Got it. Fine. Easy. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh my god, the life cycle of a bee is the most. I'm trained to teach physics to A level, and anyway, we can talk about it right now. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, spinning you round. Thank you, you patient people. Oh, more people have joined us. That's nice. Da -da -da -da. Hello, Science Alliance. I, I need you to appreciate the full beauty uh, of my costume. I think this is one of my finest hours. I'm dressed as a bee, except the head of the bee. It's not the head of my costume. Yeah, you heard of the red tail? Come on, it's uncanny! This is a red-tailed bumblebee, which is exactly, I mean, it needs no further explanation, right? I just, I don't get invited to enough fancy dress costumes because I've really got a lot in the bag now that I want to reuse. Right, this is the Lego Storytime Show. I am Lara, I run this science communication business, Theatre of Science, I stream free lessons, IGCSE physics lessons, all ages science lessons, this isn't that. This is just a chat about a thing that I learned. We do it every week. There's a little Lego story at the end. You ready? A little skim of Lego story. Um, and we do an activity. And the thing that I've learned about this week is bees and wasps. Like, what are the differences? Uh, quick warning. <laughs> I feel like there's always a lot of warnings now before the Lego story at the end. If you don't like animal on animal violence, if you don't like scenes of decapitation, it's all done in Lego. Like, I've got a five-year-old and I'd let them watch it, but if you really don't like animals not being kind to other animals, you maybe just watch until the Lego story bit. Right, um, I'll do what I always do when we talk about animals. We'll just go right back to the beginning and look at how scientists categorise them, because all living things on Earth and things that have been alive on Earth 
Scientists are put into different categories, right? You've heard of the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the fungus kingdom. Let's look at where bees and wasps lie. Have they actually got that much in common in terms of biology? So all animals, let's say they're on this line. This line is every animal ever that has existed. Obviously, that's a bit vague. So we split animals into different categories um, called phylum. So animals are put into 31 different phylums, different categories. There are, for example, all the animals that have spinal cords. We're in that one. Uh, but today we're looking at the ones that have an exoskeleton and joints because bees and wasps are in that group. And that's called arthropods. So arthropods are all the animals that have an exoskeleton and little joints. We learned this during the spider lesson. All arthropods molt like shed their exoskeleton. We will talk more about that later. And over 85% of animals are arthropods. Over 85% of animals. If you had to name an animal, if I asked you to name 50 animals, probably you'd mainly name the ones with the spinal cords, right? Like the mammals and stuff. But no, most of them have these exoskeletons and joints. Right, so the arthropods also get split up into different groups. We looked at in the spider lesson how the arthropods that usually have eight legs and don't have any wings, they are arachnids, so they are spiders. But we're looking at the arthropods that also have a three-part body and three pairs of legs and antennae. Come on, what is that name of that? What's that big group? It's an arthropod, it's got an exoskeleton and joints, but it's also got a three-part body, three pairs of legs and antennae that all those animals are called the insects. Uh, and over 50% of animals are insects. Over half of all animals are insects. Isn't that interesting? I mean, seriously. Like, oh, just keep dropping Lego on the floor. If I said to you, name 10 animals, I should have done that at the beginning. What animals are you thinking of? I'm thinking of like elephants, giraffes, cats, badgers. I probably wouldn't name one insect just because we're not insects. Over 50% of animals are insects. I need, I need another bit of Lego. It's all right, I've got drawers, I've got Lego drawers right here. Here we go. Let's move on then. So bees and wasps are insects. Uh, but you split the insects up into different categories as well. I didn't know this. The earwigs have a whole different category to themselves. Moths and butterflies, uh, flies. Uh, and we're looking at the line, which is sawflies and wasps and bees and ants. So ants are incredibly closely related to wasps and bees. I didn't realise that. Sawflies, and, and these are all the animals that hatch out of eggs as larva. Larva is like a tiny little worm type thing. Uh, and, and that group, if, in case you're interested, is called the Hymenoptera. So if you're on a picnic and you're being bothered by ants and wasps, you can say, oh, the Hymenoptera, just so irritating today. Um, and sawflies quickly sort of get sectioned off into their own little group. And ants, bees and wasps. Yeah, they're all really closely related. And when I looked this bit up, uh, what have ants, bees and wasps got in common? I found out that they've all got a narrow waist. I thought, oh yeah, I guess they have. Like, so I looked up diagrams of bees and wasps and sort of focused on the, the fact that they have a narrow waist. And I found this diagram. It's very scientifically accurate diagram. I'm really pleased that this person spent hours drawing this and putting it on Wikipedia. It's, it's completely freaked me out. Look at this. A diagram of what? That's not a narrow waist. That's just two different bits of animal barely stuck together. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. So, so that's what we mean by narrow waist. Obviously, the, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, right? Because it's an insect, so it's got these three different bits of body, but... So this is the wasp, and then if you look up a diagram, so weird! If you look up the diagram of the bee, very similar, very similar. So this is a, a honeybee. Um, there are, so I keep flipping you, um, there are loads of different types of bees and wasps, and, but we tend to think about honeybees, don't we, that live in their gang in hives, and we tend to think about these sort of very bright yellow and black wasps, a common wasp that builds nests. We're going to talk about those too because we're comparing them, we can't compare all of them, but actually most bees live on their own and most wasps live on their own. Solitary bees, solitary wasps, well, we won't worry about them too much today. Um, so yeah, once I saw this, I just can't unsee it. It's called, if you're interested, the petiole, this bit, which is confusing because petiole is also the name for a bit of a leaf, but the narrow waist of an ant or a bee or a wasp is called the petiole. I think this is what has been slightly freaking me out. Bees and wasps do make me a bit uncomfortable, and I think this is why, actually, because I don't like it when animals look like I can break them really easily. It makes me nervous, and it just they're just so breakable. Oh, it's making me feel weird just looking at it. It's just like two little fluffy bits 
stuck to get anyway oof. so so that's what bees and wasps and ants have in common remind me to tell you later the the difference between them what separates a bee from a wasp i'm just gonna uh, write it down so i don't forget um so already just by doing this what is the definition of a bee and a wasp and an ant but it's not the ant show sorry guys um I've already learned loads about, about bees and wasps, uh, as presumably you have too, okay? So obviously they're animals, so that, and they've all got an exoskeleton and joints. They're all arthropods, um, and, and all arthropods molt. So bees and wasps must shed their exoskeleton, which got me really confused. Because in the spider show, we learned that spiders are arthropods and spiders shed their exoskeletons and suddenly it all makes sense to me because I had loads and loads of dead spiders in my cupboard that were a little bit ghostly looking, like not quite there and I was like, oh right, yeah, it's the exoskeleton that the spiders have shed. It's things that have skeletons on the inside like us, the skeleton grows with us. If you've got an exoskeleton, it doesn't grow with you, so if you want to get bigger, you have to just shed it and sort of grow a new one. So spiders do that. Makes sense. I've never seen a wasp or a bee exoskeleton. I've never seen like a kind of little translucent ghost-like wasp anywhere. And you would think that you would, wouldn't you? And then after quite a lot of searching on the internet, I had my answer. It has to do with this bit up here, that they hatch out of eggs as little larva, little worm type things. So it's while they're, they start out as almost a completely different creature, right? This little, I think I have a picture here. Here's some eggs, and then they turn into this larva thing, okay? And it's while they're in this other state that they shed. Anyway, you have to come on this journey with me, because <laughs> as soon as I started looking at the exoskeleton and the shedding, I had to get into the life cycle of the bee. I teach physics to A-level, that's what I trained to do before I started doing this ridiculous job. Uh, and the life cycle of a bee is the most confusing thing I've ever tried to read about in my entire life. But here goes, right. You've, hopefully, if you're doing this video, you can see what this activity is, and you can start doing it right now if you like. Um, you have to just repeatedly stab a pencil into a jar of rice. That's all you do. If you want to do this with me right now, repeatedly stab a pencil into a jar of rice. You will find that at first the pencil comes out very easily and if you just keep going and 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 keep going then something amazing will happen. Um, it didn't work for me because I can't really do it and talk. I should have done a here's one I prepared earlier uh, but I didn't. Anyway I'm just laughing because I, you can see I did it with this rice yesterday on Facebook so the rice is really great. What I actually picked this up for is that conveniently for us, because we're doing that activity, um, a bee egg looks a lot like a grain of rice. So did you get that? You can start doing that now if you like. While I'm talking, just pull a pencil out of some rice and stab it in again. Pull and stab, pull and stab, pull and stab. I think it works best if you do it quite fast and if you don't pull it completely out before you stick it back in again. Um, I probably won't do it alongside you. It's just really annoying, isn't it? It's very distracting. Um, I'll leave it, I'll do mine at the end. So, the queen bee, a female bee, they've been hibernating and then they wake up and what happens is they fly off quite early after they've hibernated and they find uh, different groups of bees to mate with. So animals, right, uh, the males have the sperm, the females have the egg, you put the egg and the sperm together and it makes a new animal, okay? So usually, I don't know, like horses, Male horse has the sperm, female horse has the egg, they put them together, new little baby horse is born. Bees are amazing. The female flies off, like she's got eggs, right? Gathers loads of sperm from loads of different bees, male bees, and then that's just it. Um, she can just store them, it can store them in its body. So it just goes back to its nest and pretty much stays there forever. Um, bees secrete wax, so the female bee, the queen bee, makes uh, these little honeycombs out of wax uh, and then lays eggs in them and different eggs turn into different bees. So there's, there's three different types of bee in a bee nest. There's the queen bee, uh, there's the workers, which are all female, and there's the drones, which are male. The workers do all the work, they're called the workers, and the drones are basically just there to give sperm to the next queen bee that needs the sperm to make a new bee. So. We've got all these little eggs in all this honeycomb that they've made out of wax. Um, the eggs 
hatch and you get this larva that I've never, I get very confused about larvas and pupas, but the egg hatches into a larva. It's just this little, yeah, like sort of caterpillar maggoty type thing. And that thing gets fed with something that you might've heard of in the beehive called royal jelly, which is just a mixture of kind of proteins and nice nutritious stuff. The larva gets fed with royal jelly for a few days. And if it's gonna be a queen bee, it only gets royal jelly for its whole life until it becomes a queen bee, that's the difference. But if it's just gonna be a, a worker bee, um, then after a few days of royal jelly, they switch to, um, I think it's called breads, like pollen bread, bits of pollen. And here we get the difference between wasps and bees, because wasps and bees actually, up until this point, it's very similar. You get a queen wasp who builds the nest, um, but wasps feed their larva insects. It's actually good, right? Because some insects are very annoying to humans. So yeah, wasps don't collect pollen to feed to their larva baby things. They collect insects. And apparently this is like the biological difference between a bee and a wasp. They reckon that at first, in the beginning, there were only wasps. And then some of those wasps evolved to gather pollen to feed their babies, kind of became vegetarians. So they're the bees but wasps are the ones that still catch live animals to give to them. It's interesting, I didn't know this. So the larva eventually uh, gets sealed in, the worker bees seal this little larva grub type thing that's been growing into um, its little honeycomb bit. And then it changes into this word called a pupa. So I've, I've done a slide for you. Here we are, no, that's not a slide, that's just my furry jumper. Here's the waxy cap that the worker seals the little pupa and then it, it kind of turns into a pupa, almost like a sort of butterfly type thing. Uh, the larva builds a little cocoon around itself and then um, just, well, I've just put, just magically grows into an adult bee. <laughs> this is called the pupa stage. I have no idea. Just particles pop off and move around and then eventually you get bee. I have no idea. Like I say, I'm trained to teach physics. It's unbelievable. But it's when it's in this stage that it does some molting because obviously it's growing. So it's an arthropod, it sheds its skin, and then eventually, oh, well done, whoever took these photos and put them on Wikipedia, thank you so much. It takes a different amount of time depending on whether it's going to be a queen or a worker or a drone. Um, but yeah, it just eats its way out. It eats the little waxy cap. And here we have basically a, an adult bee being born, if you like. It's so cute, isn't it? Out it comes. And that's that. And then it's an adult bee. So that's why you don't see little exoskeletons of bees lying around, because this bee isn't going to grow anymore. Huh. So yeah, wasps, very similar, basically, except they're not vegetarians. Uh, there's obviously a lot of difference between a wasp's nest and a bee's nest. Here's the wasp's nest. To my mind, the wasps win, actually. We all know about bees, don't we? They they chew up this wax and they make this beautiful waxy honeycomb. It is amazing. Uh, wild bees still use wax, but they might go into like a little crevice or something. And yeah, wasps, they chew up bits of wood. So their nest is basically papier-mâché. Um, oh, I've told you about the difference now. I can get rid of that. Yeah, a wasp nest. I mean, people get really freaked out, don't they, if they find a wasp nest. It's an amazing papier-mâché structure. Imagine all those little wasps just chewing and chewing and chewing and then sticking it together. Look at all these pants. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? Amazing. Right. So the other big difference, I feel like, what time is it? We should get to Lego story time quite soon, but I thought the, the other really big thing that everyone's going to ask about if we do bees versus wasps is what's the deal with when bees sting you, they die, and when wasps sting you, they don't die. Oh, so interesting. That's not even really true. So most bees, I believe, and wasps, most of these little stingy friends, They've got a stinger or a sting, depending on if you're uh, American English or British English, which is quite smooth. I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm doing this. I do have a picture. Here's a, here is the sting of a queen wasp. Look at that, an actual kind of photo taken with a magnifying glass. Isn't that amazing? As you can see, it's very smooth, right? It's just designed to go in and out. Um, and it does. So the, but I didn't know this, that most bees are actually the same. They've got this smooth stinger that will can sting a human and then can come out fairly easily. It's actually, it's really honeybees that have a stinger that is barbed. And I will show you a really strange image of what that means. 
here's a here's a honey bee stinger. So can you? I, I feel weird about touching it. I feel like it's quite invasive. But anyway, can you see it's got these? It's not smooth. It's got these barbs on it. So if you imagine that sting is going to go in easily, but when it tries to come out, these barbs are going to get caught on on the skin or whatever. This only really happens when it stings mammals like humans. Mammals have got quite tough skin so when the honeybee stinger goes in it can't get out again because of these barbs and if it does come out it sort of brings quite a lot of the bee out with it and the bee dies. Um, but actually honeybees can sting other other insects and and it come out quite easily. So, so bees don't die when they sting other insects, but they do die if they sting humans because our skin is tougher. So we don't know whether that's just really unlucky that the bee has evolved to be able to sting other insects and not die. And it's just unfortunate that like, it didn't evolve with humans, that if it stings a human, it dies. Or it might be that honeybees, honeybees are just all about working in a team. And if the stinger doesn't come out, then the bee has longer to pump venom into like the enemy or the threat to the hive. So it's, it's more effective. So basically a honeybee sacrifices itself for its team by dying and making sure that there's enough venom in us that we're gonna run away. Um, I didn't know this, that actually a bee can live for about like, over, just over a hundred hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to stab my pencil into my rice while I say this last bit because we're gonna go to story time now and I wanna make it work. Um, yeah, bee, a honeybee can live for a hundred hours after it has stung a person and they think maybe this is because it's evolved to be able to still protect the hive with its last few hours of life. Like it's not as useful if it, if it just stings and dies. You need all the, all the workers you can get on the job. Right, this is just not gonna work. So I should probably leave this rice stabbing because it just looks really weird, doesn't it? And I can't hold it up because then it, it doesn't work either. It worked yesterday and if I kept doing this enough, it would work again. What you're supposed to find is that um, when you first start stabbing, then there's lots of gaps in the rice, right? It's just all obviously kind of randomly arranged inside the jar. If you keep stabbing and stabbing and stabbing and stabbing and stabbing and stabbing, um, what you're doing is you're basically making the rice grains line up closer and closer and closer together. So eventually you should find that the pencil sticks into the jar of rice because of friction. Friction is like a pushing force. So eventually there should be enough grains of rice lined up touching the pencil that there's enough friction that the pencil can't get out and I, the reason that we're doing this is because um bees and wasps are both quite good pollinators so i better talk about this just before we go to story time handy flowers have got sperm and eggs as well just like other living things flowers need their sperm and eggs to get together so that they can make babies like seeds right um but obviously flowers can't move around so how do they get their um, sperm and eggs touching? Well, it's ingenious. They just use bees. They evolved with, with bees. They're really just using them. So the sperm of a flower is kind of the pollen. The pollen sort of turns into a sperm, but basically we'll say that the pollen is the sperm. And the egg of the flower, let's do that in red, uh, is kind of somewhere down here. So what happens is the flower makes this delicious, sweet, tasty nectar which wasps and bees do drink. Adult bees will drink, uh, adult wasps will drink nectar. The bees want the pollen as well. So the bee comes along, uh, drinks the delicious nectar, and it rubs its furry little belly all over the pollen on purpose, because the bee wants to collect the pollen, remember? Because the bee has evolved to feed the pollen to its little babies. So um, there's quite a lot of stuff to do with friction in here. The bee's got little hairs on it, and it's the, the because of friction, the pollen sticks to the hairs but bees also um, have little plates inside their bodies uh, which move around and they can kind of nuzzle their little it's not a tummy is it but you know what I mean nuzzle their little bodies really close up to the pollen and scientists have just found out that these plates can slip over each other really easily there's hardly any friction because of some little hairs on them I don't really know how it works but yeah it's quite amazing apparently that bees do this constantly this sleep Slip, sliding motion and there's there's no real wear and tear to their bodies whereas obviously human bones we, we get wear and tear quite quickly um so yeah the bee picks up pollen on its furry little body and then comes over to the next flower and because it's got pollen on its body that pollen ends up getting onto the next flower and that pollen just kind of 
it's just amazing. It just builds a little tube down to that egg and that's how flowers uh, reproduce. And wasps, you might have noticed, they're not quite as furry. They're, they're shinier because they don't actually want to collect pollen, but they will drink the nectar. So they're not quite as good pollinators as bees, but they will get some pollen on them. And they're still important pollinators. Right, putting that rice to one side. Let's do Lego story time with, again, just another little warning, if you don't like animal on animal violence. I know some of you are here for the animal on animal violence. I know, I know, but some of, some of you might be a, not, not a fan, so I've got to warn you. Okay, <clears throat> right. After this show, have a look around your house and see what country everything is made in. You'll find a lot of different countries mentioned. Lots of t-shirts in our house were made in Bangladesh. My cocoa powder was packed in the Netherlands. Um, Lego, I just found out, is made in Hungary, Denmark and Mexico. Here's one of my Lego characters saying, I thought I was Greek, what? Um, and you'll find that loads of stuff is made in China. Uh, this is partly because, everyone thinks it's because workers get paid a lot less in China uh, than they do in other countries, and that is partly true. Um, it's also because there are a lot of people in China, and China really wants to do business. There are a lot of very well-organised factories in China, and they will make you anything you like. It's also quite easy to get things from China to the rest of the world. There are good train lines, there are good ships. So our story this week begins with a ship that travelled from China to France in 2024. It was bringing pottery, but it also brought something else. It brought a wasp, a hornet, Vespa Velutina, the Asian hornet, otherwise known as the yellow-legged hornet. The Asian hornet arrived and European bee numbers went down, very down. In November 2023, so just last year as I am doing this, um, the president of the Portuguese beekeepers reported that 35% less honey was being made in some parts of the country thanks to the Asian hornet getting rid of the bees. Some studies suggest it could lose France £26 million pounds each year. Now, Sometimes when we say that an animal is killing another animal, it can be a little bit confusing. Like last week, we looked at how when black rats arrived on the Galapagos Island, they made the Galapagos rice rats go extinct, but they didn't exactly kill them. It was just that black rats uh, were eating the food that the Galapagos rice rats were eating, and so the, the rice rats went hungry. Similarly, um, grey squirrels in Europe are making red squirrel numbers go down because grey squirrels carry a disease that kills red squirrels. So when I say Asian hornets are killing European bees, you might be thinking that it's, it's something a little bit like that. Uh, but no, no, it's not. What it is is Asian hornets wait outside European beehives until a bee comes or goes, one of the bees here saying, hey, has, has anyone seen Esme? Um, and then when a bee leaves the hive or enters the hive, the Asian hornet chops its head off. Ah, Esme, no, what are we gonna do? Um, they actually chop lots of bits off and just take the best bit back to their nest to feed their larva. Um, and it's not just the head chopping off that is the problem because quite quickly the bees uh, learn that they've, they've got to keep the door shut of the hive. They, they just learn not to leave the hive because they're so scared. But obviously that means that they can't collect pollen and they can't collect water. And that is obviously very, very bad for the bees. Um, now you might be thinking, well, how come, if this Asian hornet is around, how come they have bees in Asia? And that would be an excellent question. The thing is, the Asian hornet didn't just land on the planet with these amazing hunting skills. They evolved slowly over time. And Asian bees evolved with the Asian hornet. So as the Asian hornet got better and better and better at killing things, um, Asian bees got better and better at defending themselves. When Japanese bees, for example, have had enough of the Asian hornet's nonsense, hundreds of them jump on it 
and vibrate their wings in a special way uh, to generate enough heat to effectively cook the hornet alive. And they've also learned that when there's a hornet around, they should leave and enter their... European bees? They didn't evolve with the Asian hornet, did they? They haven't got a clue how to deal. So actually, um, a European bee, when there's an Asian hornet around, will actually uh, become sort of more nervous and move more slowly in more zigzaggy way and make it much easier for the Asian hornet to catch them. Very sad times. Um, the prob this is a massive problem because Asian hornets, uh, they don't seem to be going away. They are now very well established in Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, Italy, Switzerland, Germany. They can only survive in warm weather. So it, it feels like the UK where I am has a little bit of an advantage because it's not always that warm in the UK. Um, but they have been seen since 2016 and they've been all over the south and even in Hull. Last summer they were seen in London for the first time. So far experts in the UK have managed to destroy uh, Asian hornet nests before they kind of become established but it's a bit confusing because there were loads of sightings in 2023 but we don't know whether uh, that's because the battle is lost and Asian hornets are in the UK to stay or whether last year was just really particularly hot so it was a, a bumper year for them. It's important to remember of course that the Asian hornet is not evil it's just an animal that we happen to bring here doing its job. Um, they're, they're actually just incredibly good at surviving. One of the things they do that most bees don't do is they eat, uh, they eat roadkill, apparently. In Spain, they could be seen all over the road munching things that cars have killed. Um, they're unlikely to sting humans and they're no more dangerous to us than a bee. But if you see one, it is important to report it. Of course, that means you need to be able to identify them. Um, if you're sure you've seen an Asian hornet, then report it using the UK Hornet Watch app. Don't be tempted to mimic the beauty of nature and cook it alive or chop its head off. The end. Very pleased with my little beehive hair. Right, uh, that's the end. That's the end of the Lego Star Show. I'll pop you back up there. So yeah, there's a beautiful, in fact, I'll probably post it in my Facebook group. Um, there's a lovely website, the, uh, the Wildlife Trust one is a very good one for showing you the difference between an Asian hornet. I should say, it's really, really confusing. I basically had to rewrite that story time because there is an Asian giant hornet. If you hear stories about a, a giant, it's called the murder hornet um, because it, it will get into a beehive and chop the heads off all of the bees in the beehive and then start pulling all the little babies out of their honeycombs and all the nature and eating them as well. So that's the murder hornet, that's the Asian giant hornet that is not in the UK or Europe yet, uh, but they have found it in America. So a lot of news stories, if, you, if you're looking on an American website, might talk about that. We are talking, if you're in the UK like me, about the Asian hornet, here's the website. Um, so this is Wildlife Trust being wise. This is the European hornet, which is apparently a bit bigger than the Asian hornet. But you can see it almost looks like a wasp, doesn't it? It's got that really yellow uh, bum. And the Asian hornet looks totally different, really. The thing to look out for is these yellow legs. So it's, it's much more brown, but it's got a kind of orange stripe at the bottom. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure if you ever see something that's a bit like it, it's very confusing. <laughs> you look it up. It's very confusing because there's like a hornet mimic hoverfly who is probably regretting that now, which really does. Like, if you just saw that on its own, you really might think that that was a hornet, mightn't you? Uh, but just look out for the yellow legs. Look, the hoverfly's got, got black legs. I mean, you probably don't want to get that close anyway. And an, a little word for this chap. <laughs> this thing has got yellow legs and, and it looks like it's got a massive stinger. But actually, this thing is not dangerous to humans uh, at all. You will find it in the UK. It's just a perfectly sort of natural, should be here, part of our ecosystem. <sighs> what I mean, it's got massive yellow antennae. Maybe that's the thing you look for. I mean, I imagine, you know, I love nature, but most of us, if we saw something that looked like a massive hornet, would not be going, oh, has it got yellow antennae? Why has it got brown antennae? Most of us would be going, ah, 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 ah. But anyway, now maybe we can breathe a little more deeply 
very unlikely to get stung by an Asian hornet there. Right. Yeah, so that was the end of the show. Thank you so much for coming. And that was it. Oh, yes, that's my last lesson before the Easter holidays, if you're watching live. So if you're watching live, we've got two weeks off now. Well, off. When I'm writing my sports magazine. And then uh, next next term, we're going to be doing a whole new load of LEGO story shows. And we're also going to be doing um, live streamed lessons, very much like this, but I get you to do a bit more thinking. Frankly, it's not all just me stabbing rice. So we're going to do nutrition next term. We're going to learn about, I don't know, carbohydrates and fiber and protein and vitamins, minerals and what they do to our bodies. That'll be interesting. Um, if you are enjoying these lessons, if you think that I deserve to be paid for my job, you totally can do that. That is the only way I get paid. So cool, isn't it? This is my job. So I do everything for free. The lessons and the shows, there's an IGCC physics lesson, all the printouts for the lessons, not there's none for the show, are free. And everything's available on catch up on my website as well. And I just say, if you can pay me, if you feel like I deserve five pounds a month of your money for what I'm offering, then you can sign up. And, and I do give little, it looks like this flower is sort of staring at me in a slightly creepy way. Um, yeah, I go to this website called Coffee that I have. Um, and you can sign up with five pounds a month and I send you nice things. It's a very good time to sign up. I'm not very good at the hard sell, but it would be unfair of me to not tell you that it's an excellent time to sign up. What happens is you chip in five pounds a month towards my wages and I send you Theatre of Science magazine. You're on the list to get it. And I just say it comes out whenever I've written it. And this time, because of lots of things going on in life and also like making a website over the Christmas holidays, Theatre of Science magazine is really late. So for my regular supporters who've been supporting me for years, some of them, who have been very patiently waiting for this magazine, it's going to be really big this time. It's going to come in a box. It's going to have quite a few different, quite a few, I don't know, hype it up, but I'm going to try and put little free things in there along with the magazine because they deserve it because they've been waiting. I've basically missed one. Um, so usually you can sign up to support me and straight away get the latest magazine, but you're not going to be able to sign up with a fiver and get sent that because I think it's just going to be too big. Like I'll just, I'll just be losing money. But if you sign up now, I will send you the usual supporter pack, which is great anyway. It comes with a past issue of a magazine, comes with some rainbow glasses. That's so good. Description of how they work, whatever. And then you'll be on the list to get the next one which was hopefully coming out fairly soon. I want to have completely finished it and edited it and got it sent off at least by the Easter holidays. If not, probably not. I won't get it back from the prints in time, but it'll be, I want it to be ready to go by the end of the Easter holidays. So yeah, it's an amazing time to sign up. If you've been thinking, oh, I really should like chip into Lara's wages because I use her lessons. Do it, do it now. That's me doing my hard sell. So the coffee is, there's a link to it on my um, about section of YouTube, which you are on right now, or there's a sign up button at the top of my Facebook page, or it is all over my uh, website. If you just, if you just search the science, you get to my website because I'm pretty big deal. Also, no one else had the name the science. Oh, hello, Alice. Hey, Alice, I'm out of police, I'll see you. Um, were you, oh, is that you? Is, um, is uh, Lucian here? There's Etienne. But Lucian sent me a Lego rat. Did you see? It's like become a running joke that I don't have a Lego rat. He sent me one. He sent me loads of amazing cool Lego stuff. I haven't even thanked him yet uh, in writing. This is me thanking him right now if he's here. Ah, oh, so, so excited. Right, Alice. So if you're watching live, what happens is uh, you can't have comments on YouTube. So I do a little post on my Facebook page where if you want to, you can go to my Facebook page and say hello, and then I just read it out at the end. So if you go to Theatre of Science on Facebook now, uh, you will find it at the top of my page, and you can say hello, and then I will say hello back. Great story, I like your bee people. Thank you, Alice. I was worried that the Asian hornet and the honeybee wouldn't be um, like distinctive enough, but yeah, I spent quite a long time looking at how honeybees sort of have brown heads, and Asian hornets have more black heads and yellow. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for noticing. This is one of my jobs awesome because you, you guys always notice everything. Very nice bumblebee hat. Yeah, thank you. I'm keeping it. I'm drinking honey tea. Nice. He hello, Lucian. No, not Lucian. Etienne. Hello, Etienne. Sorry. Uh, happy Easter. Yeah. I've been so like busy throwing Lego together and stuff. I sort of forgot it's Easter holidays now. What? You're in Australia? What? Can't wait to share this with our kiddo tomorrow after the sun comes out and the bees start buzzing. Ah, oh, that's nice. So are all your bees kind of about to go into hibernation? I've seen a few bumblebees flying past me, which made me know that it was time to do this show. Uh, but our bees have... Uh, and you're in Rhodes, Isabel and Thomas. Oh, come on. We are very excited to have received our first magazine. Oh, yeah, you got it. Oh, that's so cool. 
Oh, I'm so excited that Theatre Science Magazine is, is now a worldwide operation. Oh, what's this? We have a wasp nest in the loft for three or two or three years, but it never caused any problems, so we leave them. Oh, isn't that nice? Lots of people hate European hornets. But when I found out how many, how many mosquitoes they eat a day, I love them. I did not know that. We need a separate hornet show, don't we? Except I've blown the Lego stories out now. But oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know that they eat mosquitoes. Hello, Sebastian and Humphrey. Watching on the phone as mummy is getting her casts off her ankles today. Oh, I feel like we've really been on this journey with you. Good luck. That must be such a weird feeling. Oh, cast on your ankles and then cast not on your ankle. Have, have, be kind to yourself, yeah? Take it easy. I'm moving my ankles, trying to imagine. Oh, well, Sebastian Humphrey, I'm so pleased that I could be with you while your mum was getting that done. Oof. I did open the Lego set. Yeah, so we, if regulars know that I had quite a long discussion with them the other week because... Um, I bought this on a charity stall for a quiz and thought it'd be really good for giving to my friend's children for their birthday and I was going oh I really want a Lego Olaf though it'd be so useful shall I just I can't shall I and then what sealed the deal was that Lucian wrote to me and sent me loads of awesome Lego and said but he thought I should open it so I did and I regret nothing he's great hello Jay Daisy and Daniel I went to a talk by Steve Backshall last night all about venom. Can we have a Lego story time? Poison versus venom. Yeah, that's a good idea. Poison versus poison v venom. Actually, if you sign up now, sort of science magazine. Um, if you sign up with six pounds a month, I send you two magazines, and you will get a uh, rainforest issue, which does have a little bit about venom. Does it have venom versus poison in it? Uh, it's got a tiny little bit about snake venom in it. Thanks for that, Rockin. Jay, Daisy and Daniel, hello again. I did, I did do Olaf, yeah, I did. Uh, hello, Freya. You are so welcome. I made a paper funnel. Taylor. Now, oh, thanks for reminding me, Taylor. I should be stabbing rice. I will stab my rice. I will not go offline until my rice is sticking to my pencil. Oh, look, Lucian is here. Hello, Lucian, thank you so much. I was so excited. Well, the kids like gathered round and opened your letter for me because we were all so excited. I have not worked out how the microphone works yet because uh, for a physics teacher, I'm super really embarrassingly bad at that stuff. But these holidays will be an excellent time. It was so kind of you. Can you thank everyone who is involved? Your whole team. You've been stung by a hornet in France, but luckily I was by the sea and it drowned after it stung me. There's a story. Uh, Lucian is a Viking, so he spends quite a lot of time by the sea. Wow, I've never been stung. Did it really hurt? Have you been stung by a beer or what can you compare? I mean, it's easy to talk about loving all nature until what is actually on you, sticking its stinger into you. All right, Ethan, the third person here. Hello. <laughs> Ethan, you know if you talk in the third person, it means you don't say I. You say like, Ethan is watching. Ethan is enjoying this show. Ethan has stabbed right. I feel like, I feel like that's how you talk because you're the third person. <laughs> Hello, Casper and Iris, and Iris' his little sister, Nell. Hi, Nell. Hiya. Hi, Nell. Hiya. <clears throat> Taylor. Yes, Taylor. It was. It is all Taylor's fault, slash thanks to Taylor, that, that I am stabbing rice right now, because Taylor requested bees versus wasps. It was a really good idea, because I absolutely did not know the difference between bees and wasps. I didn't know that, basically, bees are vegetarians and wasps aren't. Hello, Raida and Juaria. Taylor's here. Alistair and Elena and uh, Elia will be watching on catch up as we can no longer watch live. Well, he hello, Elia and Elena and Alistair. Good to see you. Have you made it this far? I don't know. I'm really sorry if you're watching on catch up and you had to watch all of that. No offense to the people who are live watching all of that. It's just it's a, bit, it's a bit less tedious life, isn't it? No way! It, um, Luci um, Etienne caught a wasp yesterday, had to free it outdoors. We have seen different parasitic wasps in the garden. One burst out of a cabbage white caterpillar. What? Wow. And one was dragging a big spider across the porch. Yes, I should say there are loads of wasps, aren't there, that don't actually sting. There's wasps that don't look like, if you look at parasitic wasp after this, they really don't look like what you think of as a wasp at all, but they are still wasps. Basically, from what I could gather, a wasp is anything that isn't a bee or an ant. 
I think that's the definition of wasp. It's one of these ones, that if it's not an ant, it's not a bee, it must be a wasp. Rocklin Boda, good morning. What is meant to happen? Yeah, Taylor, um, I'm trying to, doing it really fast now. Oh, come on, I can't start my Easter holiday until my pence is stuck in mice. It's just absolutely not gonna happen. Hello, Clear. I am in a bee costume. I, need, I know you like the costumes, so I thought I'd better make an effort. What was the name of the wasp thingy? What was the name of the wasp thingy? Do you mean the Asian hornet? You mean that's what you should be looking up to see what an Asian hornet is? What was the name? I'm gonna say Asian hornet. Salutations, Lucian, son of Kerry Burt. There you go. Which team are you guys on? Team wasps or bees? I'm on team bees. Violet, what a great question. We have said that it's bees versus wasps. Do you know what? I do like an underdog. I always go for the underdog. That means the one that you sort of wouldn't expect to win. Having done this show now, I'm actually a massive fan of wasps. I think their nests are really cool. I think chewing up wood and then papier-mâcheing your nests together, that is pretty cool. It feels like the bees are using magic by using, uh, by using wax that just sort of comes out of them. But the wasps are using brute strength and I like that. And I like the fact that wasps are catching other insects. I think that's pretty cool. I think the whole hornet thing, I think an animal that has evolved, I didn't want to say it in Lego Story Show because I didn't want to upset anyone, but they, they pull the heads and all the little bits off bees. They get the best bit of the bee and they basically turn it into a meatball. I don't know why I said it now, if I thought it would upset you in Lego Story Time, like it's still you, but this feels like a more casual chat. Anyway, they do. They turn bees into meatballs and then they carry them back to their babies. They're only trying to feed their babies, right? Nature's just trying to survive. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? I'm on Team Wasp. That was the most hilarious story time. Aurelia said it's terrible. The act of the Asian Hornet, not your Lego story show. Aurelia, I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you made it through. <laughs> All right, Freya. Oh, Wilford Mabley are watching. Hello, Wilford Mabley. Yeah, the only reason I'm on Instagram. <laughs> I wake up in the morning like, oh, I know. I'll, I'll get Wilford Mabley to come by actually bothering to post on Instagram. Oh, I wish I was good on Instagram. Do you know, Wilford Mabley, I thought of you the other day. Oh, tell your mum, because I was in a cafe um, and I, and I can't, I can't remember, who's the like the theatre director, the film director that your mum is really into and all the stuff on Instagram looks really awesome because you're always doing all this stuff about this film director. I can't even remember his name. That's how uncool I am. But me and my son were sat in a cafe the other day eating some food and a really cool song came on um, and, and he just started doing this. And I just started doing that as well. And we were both just sat in complete silence with like pancakes on the end of our forks. Just doing this, like not even smiling, not grieving, just. And I thought, this is absolutely the most Tiger Lily Quinn thing I've ever done in my entire life, it was beautiful. Uh, obviously I didn't Instagram it because um, I'm rubbish. Also, I was eating pancakes. Uh, hello, hello, Imogen and Ophelia. All right, Edmund, the wasp looks weird. What? Oh, the wasp with the, the wasp. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Oh, don't remind me. Oh, oh, weird. Yeah, um, Violet, the croissant rat has become a bit of an in-joke, hasn't it? So I feel like I had to put the croissant rat in there. All right, Sarah and Eliza, hello. Good to see you two. Not see you, that'd be creepy, but you know what I mean? Okay, I'll just refresh. Um, and then I will go. I'll go and finish the science magazine. You should do one on cactuses. That is a brilliant idea. Yes, I should do one on cactuses or cacti. There we go. Where's Anderson? Where's Anderson? It's the most weird, yes, where's Anderson, exactly. Go bees and wasps. Oh, Taylor, that's better, isn't it? That's better, yeah, yeah. I have seen a few, I've got an awful memory. I watch a film, like literally I just watch a film and then Two weeks later, I can't remember whether I've enjoyed that film or not. It's um, I don't know whether I don't eat enough like fish oil or what, but I just I just can't remember. So I've seen plenty of Wes Anderson films. I think I like them. Anyway, I just I just when I think of Wes Anderson, now, I just sort of think of your Instagram page. That'll do. Uh, right. Oh, someone has someone replied to Rocklin, or maybe Rocklin's replied to themselves. Oh no way! I've got a whole Welsh crew. Etienne's in Wales as well. Right. I am aware. I'm still. Sta I just keep getting distracted. I'm not. I can't, I can't stab this rice. Okay, I'm just gonna go really fast. It's not working, I'm gonna go. Do you know what? I'm gonna model to you that sometimes it's good to quit. Sometimes you've just gotta walk away, kids. Sometimes that's the braver thing to do. 
and that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully some of you have got it to the point, I'm still going, I can't walk away. So hopefully some of you, look how grey that is, have got it to the point now where if you let go of the jar, the pencil stays. It's not even vaguely staying. <laughs> Wait, do you know what it is? Quitting is not good. What you should do is just try loads and loads of different ways. Oh man, I've told you completely wrong, haven't I? I've actually told you the opposite of what is true. I've been going really fast and keeping it in the jar. And as soon as I slowed down and started lifting it out and putting it back in again, it is actually starting to work. I can feel it. It's starting to work. Does anyone know like, any good lyrics to a song or something? Does anyone know any good jokes? Any good bee and wasp, wasp jokes? I don't think this has ever happened before on Theatre of Science, but I've, I've completely run out of banter. <laughs> it's like the last few seconds before the Easter holidays. This is such a good summary of what teachers be like just before the holidays. <laughs> I'm just refreshing the comments just to see if anyone's got anything. No, just that comment about cactuses. And do you know what? This is exactly what happened on the Facebook version of this as well. It took me ages and ages and ages and ages and ages, but I did it. And then I held it up triumphantly. And uh, about five seconds after I held it up triumphantly, it fell off and I got rice all over the floor. Coming. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. I am eight. Oh, in fact, let me know. I should have said this before. I am eight follows on Facebook, not on YouTube. I don't really care about YouTube. I am eight follows on Facebook away from 40,000 followers. 40,000 followers on Facebook. What a brilliant number. Eight followers away. I've been. <laughs> I've been checking it like every half an hour since I was 200 followers away. I can't check it now because uh, weirdly on my computer it doesn't tell me exactly how many followers I have unless I put in lots of effort. But on the app on my phone it's really easy but I'm using the app on my phone now. Let's just show this to you. gonna say I might have to give up but I sort of feel like I've come this far I can't there's a oops sorry that was it freezing because my battery's low <laughs> there's a really good line in my Beth and we didn't mention it during my Shakespeare lessons uh, but it is one of my favorite lines in all Shakespeare and I'm embarrassed now because I can't actually I can't remember it like verbatim my friend who is a head of drama uh, when I mentioned it to her, she was just like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, it was word perfect. Um, but it's something like, so Macbeth murders loads of people, right, to get where he is. And he says something like, I am in blood, I'm in blood steeped so far. It's not quite right, but 
he's basically saying that he's really far steeped in blood, but going back were as tedious as going over. So it's like he's just kind of waded into a load of blood because he'd killed loads of people. But he can't stop now because going back is going to take him just as long as carrying on wading through blood. Like, he can't undo all the bad things he's done, so he might as well just keep killing people now uh, in order to get to the other side. And I feel like that's where I am with this rice and this whole live lesson. Because if I stop, I can't stop now because we've all wasted so much of our time. Hopefully you have, you have now started doing other things. We, I've wasted so much time stabbing this pencil in that I, that I can't stop. Surely it's better to just keep stabbing and get to the other side. It's just not going to work. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and enjoy my Easter holiday and you do too. I hope you have a lovely time. I'm just going to refresh the comments one last time. <laughs> and then, uh, and then go. Oh, 79 comments. Well, this is all very good for the Facebook algorithm anyway. I'll tell my friends about you and make them like and subscribe and follow. Yeah, nice. Oh, cactus background, I totally hadn't picked up on that. Yes, of course, that's why I should do cactuses. Lara, there's 30 people watching you stab rice. I know, I know. Oh, brilliant, Rockland's got a joke. Oh. Grizzlies, can't bear them. Yes! Nice, nice. Is your laptop okay from yesterday? Yeah, it does seem to be fine. Thank you for asking. Oh, well, I like that, um, that um, Etienne has bothered to comment saying, nope, no songs, no jokes. Sorry. All right, Kaya. All right, Taylor. All right, Violet. You love your hat, my hat, thank you. Oh, Tom got stung on the eyelid once. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that is not good. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. I feel like I owe it to you to get it in because otherwise I will be admitting that this has been a complete waste of your time. Have any of you got yours to stay in? Are any of you even doing this with me? Do you know what I reckon it is? I reckon I've not got enough rice. I'm gonna go, I am gonna go, I am gonna go. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope we've all learned something there about how sometimes quitting is fine. And I'll see you all in two weeks time. Bye!